Hey, and welcome to The Short Stuff. I'm Josh Clark, and there's Charles W. Chuck Bryant, and this is Short Stuff about the invention of the traffic light, which I thought until very recently I knew where the first one was, but it turns out that is definitely up for debate and probably even wrong. Yeah, you know, this was so chock full of stuff. I kind of wondered if it could be a full-length thing. But Maybe. then I decided, no, let's just chuck, just stuff a bunch of stuff in this stuff. There you go. Stuff it up, stuffer. <laughs> so did you think the first one was in Cleveland in August of 1914? Correct. Right. And that still gets credit as such, even though there are other traffic lights. And as we'll see with a lot of the stuff we talk about, there are a lot of like little improvements, whether they're automated or whether they lit up and stuff like that. So I think that's why there's a lot of competing claims. Yeah. And it was one of those things where just a lot of people contributed to what we know and love as traffic lights today. I shouldn't say love. What we know and loathe in some cases as traffic lights today, because I'm sure I said as much in the roundabouts episode, there's maybe nothing worse than sitting at a traffic light, a red light, when there is nobody coming from either other direction. <laughs> Is one of the worst right. things that can happen to you that doesn't involve physical pain or grief. <laughs> that is true. Uh, we want to shout out History.com, uh, Rachel Ross from Live Science, and Larry Clark, not the filmmaker, <laughs> but Larry Clark, who wrote something for Washington State Magazine, uh, and the book Highways to Heaven, colon, the auto biography of America. And uh, uh, in that yeah, book, auto. there's, a, yeah, A U T O. There's a few other firsts listed in that book, which are kind of interesting. Um, Left-hand driving became the standard in 1908 in America. Mm -hmm. uh, that center dividing line st uh, first started getting painted in 1911 in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And then the first no left turn sign in 1916 in Buffalo, New York. Yeah, and shout out to Christopher Finch, the author of that book. That's right. But what about Britain? They had an idea about this long before 1914. Yeah, this to me is like, oh, okay, well, there we go. We have the first traffic signal in existence, and it happened to be in London, in Westminster, um, and it was based on a already um, used design that people use for, for railroads to say, hey, you can pass or no, don't pass. It was pretty much what you were trying to get across. And a guy who worked on the railroad, John Peak Knight, said, you know what? We've got a lot of congestion with buggies and carriages and maniacs and um, all sorts of people just running around. We need some sort of traffic signal for roads now, too. Let's adapt that railroad thing into a traffic light. And he did. And again, the first traffic light was in London in, I believe, 1868. That's right. And it was a semaphore system, which meant it had little arms that raise up and down, which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. It was actually mechanical and used gas lamps to uh, light up the sign at night, and there would be a cop there, or whatever you call a Bobby. A Bobby. Um, stationed next to it to operate the signal. And this was in December of 1868, and it was actually working well. And they thought this is going to be a huge success. Sure. And then about a month later, the uh, one of those gas lights exploded in one of those Bobby's faces. And they said, we're not going to do this. And it was about 40 years until things started happening again as far as yeah. traffic lights go. That must have been a really bad explosion on that poor Bobby because for 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 40 years, like the English were like, no, you don't want to get near a traffic signal. Forget that. It was right. a terrible <laughs> idea. Now, I can't tell you how many people were run down or how many um, buggies got hit by cars in that interim, but that's how bad that explosion was, that they abandoned it entirely. And it wasn't even the Brits that picked it up again. It was the Americans who said, we need something here. Let's try, let's pick up where the Brits left off. And it's here that most people say, that the first traffic signal was invented, even though, again, it was first uh, invented in, in London. But the Americans tend to get the uh, the credit for it. But even among Americans, it's, it's spread out over a ton of different inventors. Yeah, and you know, the thing about that British one, it wasn't even a traffic light problem. It was a gas lamp problem. Exactly. They blamed the messenger. Ah, oh, brother. Um, all right, well, we'll do a little bit more before we go into a break. Yes. Okay. In America, there were a lot of people filing patents, like tons of patents being flung around in the early 1900s about this, you know, sort of very simple idea of a traffic light. Uh, one of them, and this I think doesn't qualify because technically it's not a light. It is just a sign. Uh, in 1910, Ernest 
uh, Serene or Serene uh, introduced the automatic traffic signal in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And it had, again, no lights, which is why I don't call it a traffic light, but it had the arms arranged in a cross, rotating on an axis. Like so a weather said, vane. Yeah, so it would say stop and proceed, and it would just kind of turn on its axis and face the right way, ideally, to get people where they needed to go. Yeah, I think there was probably a cop, not a Bobby, a cop um, below operating it. So you had basically a traffic cop who had to be stationed there working it. But it was like kind of like the, the groundwork for the whole thing, right? The idea that you were telling one intersection or, or one um, direction to not move while you're telling another opposite direction to move, that's the basis of a traffic signal. I agree. And maybe Thanks. we should take a break. Okay. And maybe talk about another other couple of people who didn't get their due credit. Fair enough. So, Chuck, there's a guy named Lester Wire who, like you were saying, doesn't really get his due credit outside of um, the Mormon-held areas of Utah. Yeah, I guess you could say that. This is in 1912 in Salt Lake City, and he made something that kind of looked like a birdhouse. It was a wooden box. Had uh, This actually had red and green lights on a pole, mm-hmm. and it was attached to the trolley wires overhead to give it power. Very smart. And I don't know why... Lester Wire doesn't get the credit then. That was full two years before Cleveland. Yeah, he um, and it 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 it's basically a birdhouse. It didn't even look a bit like it. It's a birdhouse, but yeah. um, I don't know why he doesn't get credit either. But he doesn't. Um, a couple of years after that, that's where the Cleveland one came in. That everybody says that's the first traffic signal. I still don't understand why it was considered the first traffic signal if Lester Wire already had his in Salt Lake City two years before. But James Hogue is the one who gets the credit for that, that one that was installed in 1914 at the corner of Euclid and I think East 105th in Cleveland. <clears throat> and James Hogue went whole Hogue um, by having four <laughs> traffic signals Wonderful. that, thank you, that faced every direction of traffic. So that you could um, you could coordinate them, and I think it was was set up so that it was impossible to give conflicting signals, so that you couldn't tell two opposite directions to go at the same time. Like it just couldn't happen. That's right. Uh, we should shout out William Giglietti uh, <laughs> of San Francisco because I think the distinction here was that his light was the first automatic light. That's a big one that used red and green lights, and this was in 1917. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, and I'm trying to go chronologically here, in 1920, uh, William Potts, a cop in Detroit, not a Bobby, Mm -hmm. he developed some automatic traffic light systems, and I think this was the first one to use the caution light, use all three colors. That was a huge innovation, because up to that point, it was just red or green. So you had people going, 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 and then other people stopping, and then still may be going and you could have an accident adding like that little caution light that's a that was a lifesaver literally a big deal uh and we have to shout out in 1923 garrett morgan Mm -hmm. uh quite the inventor garrett was the actual first african-american to own a car at all in cleveland Mm -hmm. like i said quite the inventor uh quite the inventor invented the gas mask as well incidentally and garrett invented uh it was a t-shaped pole with it did have three positions on it, it had stop and go, uh, but this one was the first one I believe to have everyone stop for a, a moment of time, yeah, at least, so it would give other people a chance to get out of the intersection, which was a really big safety feature. Yeah, and um, Garrett Morgan is is very um, often credited as the father of the traffic signal because he sold his patent to GE for 40 grand, which is about 600 and something thousand today. Um, And GE mass produced these things. It was like really cheap and easy to produce. And so they started popping up everywhere, uh, which is, I think, why he he often gets the credit, even though his came almost 10 years after that Cleveland one. Um, But it's tough. If you look at the patent designs, it's tough to understand. You really have to like sit and think about it. But there were it was like a cross, um, and it said stop on one side and go on the other, but it would fold up 
so that it said stop everywhere, no matter what direction you were in, like yeah. you were saying. So there was a moment in between each change where all all four directions were stopping. Yeah, and we still have that overlap today on, I feel like I sometimes see lights in rural areas where they don't have that overlap, mm-hmm. or maybe they've all been changed over. But I, I, I do remember a time there where they, where they didn't have that overlap. Yeah, I remember that too. It was just wasn't even that long ago. No, uh uh-uh. uh. It was kind of like just a free for all, basically. Just go as fast yeah, as you can. Like as soon as the other one turned red, the other one was green. So it's funny that Garrett Morgan thought of this in the 1920s and it went away for a while, I guess. Yeah. We also have to shout out John Allen, who I was not only an inventor, but a bit of an entrepreneur, if you ask me. Yeah. So this was the first street level pedestrian traffic signal, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And I think they had them before that in the 1930s, but they were integrated into the traffic light themselves, right? Yeah, and um, they right off the bat basically came up with the walk or don't walk signal as we understand it today, like that that upright palm that mm-hmm. you're saying stop with. That was like the first one, and it's still in use. So that's a rare example of somebody figuring out the best design initially, you know? Yeah, that's right. But John Allen, his is kind of funny. He had the word stop and go, but he, uh, pretty smart. I mean, it didn't catch on, thankfully. But <laughs> he got on this advertising thing really early and thought, hey, why don't we do this? Why don't we have signals that are sponsored? Mm-hmm. And it could say, like, uh, go to, you know, Quickie Mart, <laughs> basically, <laughs> if they want to pay the money for that. Quickie Mart, I do. <laughs> Could you imagine if that's what it had turned into? I can, and I'm actually surprised that it's not that way now. But, yeah, it would have been cute to look at now in retrospect. But I'm I'm with you. I'm glad it didn't catch on. Oh, boy. That reminds me of one of my most hated things is the advent of the gas pump advertisements. Oh, and they're so loud, too. Oh, God. I can't turn those off quick enough. No, I'm with you. They're pretty bad, Chuck. Agreed. The worst. Well, since we both think that gas pump advertisements are as bad as it gets, that means, of course, that short stuff is apt. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.